Hello beautiful makeup lovers, thanks for tuning in and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to do a tag video that has been created by Kelly Gooch and the tag is called If I Could Keep Only One. So the idea behind this tag is if you would do a full face of makeup and you could only have one item from each product type that you use, you know, like just one primer, just one foundation out of your whole collection that you have. So you have to own it, at least that's how I understood it. And I found this interesting because it is not only about what is your favorite product, because the one that really would maybe cover most of the needs that you have throughout the years in different situations, etc., is maybe the most versatile one rather than your most favorite one. So I found it an interesting mind exercise to think about, especially since one of my goals this year is to really get a better grip of why um, I buy certain makeup products or why I like certain makeup products and what I really enjoy having in my collection. So I found this mind exercise really cool for that. So Kelly, she created this tag already about a year ago and she did a video back then and just recently she did like kind of an update where she said like, okay, I changed my mind about, I don't know, the foundation or something like this. And so I'm going to link both of those videos down below from her and also her channel so you can find your way to her. Definitely check her out. She is a sweetheart. She's really, really nice. I, I mean, she comes over. I don't personally know her, of course, but she comes over as a really, really nice person. She has a very good content, in my opinion. She does a lot of opinionated videos, but she also does get readies with me. She reviews products. So she has a variety of content. And she actually, I think she does also a lot of tag videos. And if I'm not mistaken, she created also quite some tags like this one. So definitely go and check her out. Um, and yeah, let's just get started now. Okay, so let's just go full face of makeup step by step, you know. So the first thing that we're going to put is primer. So now, I'm not super, super passionate about primers to be entirely honest. Honest, maybe I haven't tried just a very good primer yet, but um, I have one that kind of sticks out of my primer collection. I don't really have too many primers to be honest, but there's one that I keep on reaching again and again for over others, I would say. And I don't know if it's a super, super good primer, but I personally enjoy it. And this is the Primed and Peachy Cool Matte Skin Perfecting Primer from um, Too Faced, which looks like this. This is a sample size I had of it. I also had the full size at one point, but yeah, I, I do enjoy it. I like the smell. I find it really nice, especially in summer. In winter, I don't always put a primer because in winter I do put quite more moisturizing creams on my face. So I don't want to put on top of that another thing. So but in summer, I kind of like this and I find it fresh smelling. It's nice. So I would keep this one. But honestly, I'm, I'm not super, super passionate about primers. So maybe this is not the best category to start with. But this is how you start a full face of makeup. So let's quickly move on to foundation. And foundation, I... I do prefer a matte finish most of the time. So my, my thing is that I have very, very oily skin, so I do need a matte finish in some way that kind of keeps, you know, the oils in place. But on the other hand, I'm also not a fan of like the super heavy matte foundations, you know, where you feel like, you know, like you pack it onto your face and kind of rub it around, it feels like a paste. I, I don't really enjoy that too much. Um, so also in winter, I find it easier to mix in a little bit of moisture or infinity glass um, if it is a more liquidy texture of the foundation. And I have one foundation that I really, really like and that I think does a lot for me and that I also like to wear in summer and doesn't feel so heavy. And this is the Natasha Denona Transform Matte Foundation. It's very shiny. <laughs> That's how it looks like. And... This is a really nice foundation. It's the Pore Vanishing Matte Foundation from her. I really enjoy this, especially because of the fact it's pretty it's pretty thin, you know? Like it is not like this typical thick texture of a matte foundation with a good coverage. So this would be it from my collection. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I 
like when I don't know which foundation to reach for, I'm always reaching for this one. So I feel like it's a good good thing to do. And yeah, it's just an approachable foundation for me in my collection. Let's move on to concealer. So concealer, concealer I was thinking about some time. And I use concealers for different things. Like I do use concealer under my eyes. I use it also to highlight a bit. I use it to um, cover up my spots but I also use concealer if I have like kind of I don't want to make like a full face of makeup in a sense of I just want to kind of get a bit rid of redness and kind of cover up some impurities on my skin and so I needed something that could cover possibly all of this and the only concealer in my collection I feel like I can use for all of this without you know, compromising too much is the NARS, how is this called, um, Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I have it in the color Chantilly and this looks like this and it's kind of like a, like, you know, almost feels like a balm, honestly. I'm gonna swatch a little bit, you know, it's, I, I have still swatches here from somewhere else. So, it's just like this, you know, it's really creamy, very easy spreadable look. Does a pretty good good job on covering up things, you know, and I like this one especially because this is my preferred one to go for if I don't wear foundation and to spot conceal, but I also find that it works pretty decent under the eyes and it's not too too thick either, even though it is like this in this consistency, it doesn't feel thick. And that's why I decided for this one because I really don't like to spot conceal or to um, kind of do a concealer foundation, if you want to call it like this, with liquidy um, concealers that have this typical wand thing going on. And I find this one is pretty universal. I really like the formula. It's long lasting. So it had to be that one. Let's move on to the next one product type which is going to be powder so I chose for powder I have a little bit of a problem always that I really like mattifying powders but under my eyes I like to have a bit of more brightening powders so at the moment I don't have any kind of really luminous bright like finishing powder in my collection um, because I finished up my last one pretty early in the year and since I'm on a no buy for setting powders I cannot repurchase it and I have one in my collection that kind of is a little less matte but still matte enough to go on my whole face but still is not is still a little silky enough I feel to also kind of work under my eyes and this is the HT finishing powder um, from NYX this is how it looks like I have it in transparent and yeah that's just pretty much it it's a white pressed powder um, it's, yeah, you know, that's, it's very unexciting, the powder, but I like about this powder that it kind of feels silky, it doesn't matte like crazy, it doesn't make you this crispy matte that feels like it's gonna break off your face, but it still has, um, enough setting power in a matte way, let's say, that you feel it's going to keep your makeup in place without creating an oily mess. And I have actually, this is actually a um, backup that I have from it. I have one that I almost finished up by now. And, but it was like already broken inside. So I didn't want to really burst it out here. And yeah, so I really enjoyed this. I already repurchased this, repurchased it once. So I think I'm good with it to go. And I would feel, I would feel okay with only having this one, I feel. Okay, let's move on to the next category, which is bronzer. So, honestly, I think since half a year, I have been in 95% of the, or 99% of the cases when I did my makeup, I used only one bronzer, which I also use for contour. I don't really have contour and bronzer in different categories. For me, it's the same thing. And I'm going to treat it like this as well in this video. And... I was, I, I didn't really have to think, I would choose my Too Faced um, Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. I don't want to really open this up how it looks like because it is in my project pan and I'm about to film 
an update in soonish so I don't want to spoil it um, but I'm pretty sure you know how this looks like and I yeah I really enjoy this one like I have been using it since half a year so much that I, I, I don't know like I don't even have the feeling the need for another bronzer in my collection also I don't really have a big bronzer collection but this one is definitely the favorite of the ones that I have so I will choose that one okay let's move on to blush the next item is actually also my project pen and it is so let's not make a big fuss about it and it is for blush the Milani baked blush in luminoso I'm also not gonna open it and show you how less of a dome I have now or if who knows <laughs> and this one I really love I think it's such a universal flattering shade fits almost with every eye look honestly I really really enjoy it and I grab over this one a lot of times over other blushes that I have it's just my go-to choice it's my comfortable choice so I really wanted this to be in my collection and especially the fact that it's a color that pretty much goes with everything I feel is really you know making the big point here that I really wanted to keep this one if I could have only one blush Okay, next up is highlight. So highlight was a bit like, mm, because I really do like a nice blinding highlight, but when I do my makeup in more for a business environment, um, I don't feel that comfortable wearing the super blinding highlights. So it had to be something that is kind of, you know, universally useful. And that was in the end my Natasha Denona, oh my god that's terrible to film, I hope you can see, my Natasha Denona um, All Over Glow. I have it in the color light and that's how it looks like, let me open this, okay. That's how it looks like, it's pretty much just a really big um, highlighter <laughs> and I really like this one because, you know, let me show you for instance. Let's see, where do I still have not something going on on my hand from doing my makeup before? So I'm going to do one swipe of it here. And you're going to see now, it's not super, super impressive, you know, like if you can see it at all on my face, uh, on my hand. But if you keep on building this up, you know, I'm just going to make like a couple of swatches on top of this now. It becomes pretty impactful, you know. I just you can build it up to be pretty blinding, to be honest. Even though my camera does not pick it up really well at the moment, but you can make this a very blinding highlight actually without looking super over powdered. You know, it still looks melted with your skin, even though you, you know, you put quite some layers there. And I found this was pretty much the ideal highlight. It's not my favorite, so this is a pretty good example. It's not my super favorite highlight in general, but it's definitely one that's very universal in my collection, so I could use it in a lot of situations without feeling underdressed in some situations and without feeling overdressed of highlight in other situations. So that's why this one, the Natasha Denona All Over Glow, would go with me on this journey. Okay, let's move on to eyes. Let's go first of the, you know, accompanying products of eyes. Um, mascara. So recently I just became, I just became, that sounds so like spontaneous, but kind of it was. I became um, kind of allergic to my all-time favorite, which was the Lash Princess Mascara from Essence. And so if you would have asked me a month ago, which one is your favorite uh, mascara there would have been no doubt I would have said this one and I wouldn't even have to think about my answer but now oh I already showed you so I'm just gonna show you I purchased this uh, mascara from NARS the climax mascara because I I needed to find a new one and I really had to buy something because I didn't want to be uh, wandering around with infected eyes for one year um so I bought this one and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's a really decent mascara. I think it's really, really layerable, so you can build up a lot of layers without looking super clumpy or anything. I really enjoy it, and the best thing, it doesn't infect my eyes <laughs> at all. And honestly, at the moment, it's the only mascara I have in my collection, so I gotta keep this one, I guess. Okay, so this was very unexciting, but 
that's how it is and for liquid liner I would choose this one from NYX which is the epic ink liner from them which is a really nice formula I have to say like goes on really really nicely doesn't bleed out it's super like nice and like I don't know if you can see this properly but it's a great uh, liquid liner I like it it's really easy to do um, your wink liner with this one absolutely great and I was actually always a big fan of the Zoeva black box cat, black box cat eyeliner or something like this and I kind of found this like I keep my I have like this little box of makeup items that I got like as a free gift some at some point and stuff like this and I found this one in there when my other one of the one of Soeva um, went empty and then I found this one and I just love this I love this so much better than the one of Soeva so much more precise so I would definitely take this one and yeah the other thing you already saw if it comes to a pencil eyeliner I would take this one which is the Artria flash from Linda Hulberg does it ever focus I'm even showing it the wrong way I don't think so now <laughs> whatever I'm gonna swatch it for you and that's gonna show you how it looks like any way better this is how it looks like so basically it's a very dark blue with a little bit of sparkle in it and I really love this one I love this one in my waterline and I also love to put it like on my lid and then blend it out on the edges and then put like a topper shade on top of it that looks really really pretty with this one and if I were to have to keep one I think blue is my most used color when it comes to liners definitely and this is my favorite of the blues that I own in this product category so I would take this one the Linda Hulberg um, Artria flash crayon so let's move on we don't have too much things left let's go with lips so lips I thought I'm gonna split up into lipstick and lip gloss because they are two different product categories for me okay and with lip gloss I didn't have to think too much about it it would be my Fenty Beauty gloss bomb in Fenty Glow I love this so much this is so great it's so flattering on so many looks goes with about everything it looks good on a no makeup day it looks good on a full face on makeup it just feel like it just adapts to what else you're wearing it's it's amazing I really really like it and it's so comfortable it nourishes your lips as well and I just don't have any other gloss that I feel does fulfill all these categories in my collection so it definitely had to be this one and then for lipstick I would choose one that I really really love and this is already my third one of this and this is the hourglass confession lipstick they're called confession lipsticks right and it's in the color one time and this one is kind of like a berry shade I'm gonna swatch it for you and I love this one you know like this is the perfect color for just you know an everyday look but also has enough impact to be um, accompanying to an intensive eye look so I felt that this one would be a good choice for this kind of um, mind exercise and I really really love it it feels so comfortable on the lips let like this is my third one of this in this color only this color so I already think that speaks like my mind immediately went to this one when I thought about lipsticks so I think this says something that it should be definitely this one it's just super comfortable I know they are crazy expensive and super overpriced but I just I just love them what can I say sometimes you just love something let me let me check I think somebody came home let, let me check a second okay so the dog is now with me and okay um, let's move on I just realized that I forgot to do one thing and this is brows and my thing with this was a bit complicated because I always use the color cigar and fornax together from the infinity palette for my brows and I don't use anything else at the moment I also have the Zoeva brow spectrum but they were all palettes and I kind of wanted for myself not to include uh, like face palette or anything for these picks that I'm doing 
so this one was a bit uh, not possible as well as the Zoeva Brow Spectrum so I thought just pick a single from your collection which is kind of a dark brown so I in the end ended up to pick up the color Noct Nocturnal from Lethal Cosmetics which is like a really dark brown and actually I didn't have too much choice this is like <laughs> my only really dark brown from the singles that I own so I would go with this one <laughs> I guess um, so yeah, that, that's it probably and definitely decision made by what I own, not too much by my choice, to be honest, if this makes sense. So this would be my brow product. And let's come now to the interesting parts, the eyeshadow palette, at least that's the most interesting for me. And well, I did this in, I, I was like, oh my god, how am I going to decide this? I, you have so many and it had to be a colorful one, but it also had to offer a neutral look for business related reasons or if you just don't feel like doing a colorful look. It had to offer a good amount of shimmers, it had to offer a good amount of mattes, so a good ratio. And yeah, all of a sudden all these palettes, which are a bit bigger in my collection, became pretty, you know, attractive <laughs> where I'm usually a person who gravitates to smaller palettes but no way I'm going to choose an eight pan palette if I can have only have one eyeshadow palette so I was like kind of going okay every eyeshadow palette that has less than you know like 10 nine shades out so I eliminated this and then I said okay every eyeshadow palette that's only neutral out every eyeshadow palette that really only has super colorful has to go out and yeah, then I ended up pretty quickly with palettes um, that I was like, okay, now I have to choose um, which of this, but it was still so many somehow. And then I decided to also kick out the ones that would only allow me to do colorful looks in one direction, let's say. And so if it would be only, for example, greens as a colorful option, so only blues. So I kicked out these ones. And yeah, so I had still many palettes in front of me, so I had to kind of cut it down by, okay, if you can have only one eyeshadow palette, you really have to make sure that there is the maximum one shade in there that you maybe don't like. Like, so every palette that I had a complaint about, uh, that I had a complaint about more than one or two shades in there, out. And... That left me in the end with five palettes and then I was just and this was the moment when I started to go like okay just let's go emotionally in here now and actually I was really surprised I had like two narrowed down which was the prism palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills and on the other hand I was really surprised by this that it ended up there but the BH Cosmetics BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival palette these were the two that I was like one of those it's gotta be, one of those. And I have to say that <laughs> I'm still not pretty sure. So this is the Prism palette in case you don't know how it looks like. And it looks like this. Um, so it's pretty much like, it's a jewel tone palette with a couple of colorful mattes, but not too many. And this was the main factor why I was like, mm, you know, do I can really work with only this lime green shade here on top, this is really beautiful, I really love this one. Then you still have this, let me just take it like this, this color Eden which is kind of colorful and maybe also the color Lure and Saturn, kind of colorful, but that's it. And But the shimmers in here, I love the shimmers in the Prism palette, especially the color Dimension, Throne, Osiris, super beautiful, like look at this. Like, look at those. They are so beautiful. I don't even think that the camera does them justice because they have such a nice dimension to them. It was a little bit foreign because this one, the Weekend Festival palette by BH Cosmetics, actually had all the things that I wanted. It has, like, very colorful um, shades, like colorful mattes, colorful shimmers. It has a couple of neutral options for work-related reasons and it has, like, everything actually it is big enough to only work with this one you know but i don't know like i somehow thought it cannot be that from all your collection you know uh this palette is gonna cut it because i mean i really really love this palette this is a great great palette 
for the money you pay for it. I mean, I, I really can recommend it as a really good, affordable, colorful palette. And the thing in the end that really cut it for me was honestly the choice and that's why this Anastasia, the prison palette, the Anastasia Beverly Hills prison palette got kicked out and in the end, as surprised as I am by it, but it's gotta be the weekend festival palette by BH Cosmetics, which is crazy because I don't even own that much from BH Cosmetics. I think I own one other palette and I used to not really like BH Cosmetics. But what I liked really about this palette, it had like really colorful mattes, like this one, this one, this one, this one. But it also had nice colorful shimmers and even a couple of duochrome shimmers, like this color Wicked here, absolutely beautiful, as well as this color, how is it called, Ultimate, super nice. And it has this really nice, matte shade here that's absolutely stunning and yeah I'm, I'm a super big fan actually of this palette and it leaves you also for the option with this color here and this brown and these two shimmers it leaves you with an option for um, a neutral look as well so it is this one I really am satisfied with my eyeshadow palette choice even though I really didn't expect it but by going onto it with this kind of logical eliminating process it really showed me like, oh, this is apparently the kind of palette that really offers you the most in your collection. It was a nice exercise to go through. And yeah, so this is it. I had all the kind of product types that I want to talk about, yes. So let me know definitely in the comments down below what would be the items that you would have picked for each category. And I definitely can recommend you to go to your collection and do this kind of mind exercise a little bit. Even though you don't plan on sharing it in any kind of format, I still think it's a really nice way to kind of find out what are the things in each product category that you really are looking for. Um, and which is the product in your collection that offers you the most of those criteria. I think that's a really nice thing to do to go through your collection. And yeah, let me know what comes out of this definitely. Also, please give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of videos. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already so we can see each other in my next video. Bye bye!